I hope it's okay that I uh, took this off. I uh, didn't know. It might be kind of distracting. If you want it later, uh, Randy, or we can give it out. Um, thanks so much for uh, Jessica coming and sharing what, what she's up to in the ministry that you have going on and the, the lives are being changed because I know that years have been incredibly changed by the power of God. But uh, last night, I, as the guys were setting up the chairs, I... I talked to Isaac real, real quick. Where is he? You're right there. And, and so I said, how are you doing, Isaac? And he says, well, I'm on the naughty list. And I said, well, how long have you been on the naughty list? He goes, 17 years. And that's, that's how old he is. So I'm not sure what's going on with the rest of your family. It's not like you're doing better than some of the other uh, Eckerts. But um, anyway, let me ask you, what's, what's the best Christmas gift you ever got as a kid? You know, this is an interactive congregation, so did any of you ever get a gift? What's, what's the best one you ever got? Boxing gloves? Who said that? Who said boxing gloves? So you think you're a tough guy? <laughs> okay. What, shotgun? Somebody said shotgun? Yeah, I got a 410 shotgun when I was 14 years old. It was like sort of my introduction of going out and hunting with my dad and, and my cousin. So it was, it was cool. Uh, first rabbit I got, I hip shot him. You know, I didn't shoot him in the hip, but I shot, you know, <laughs> I shot from my hip, but I didn't think I got him. And dad said, no, you got him over in, I did, I got it. And so a shotgun, boxing glove, anything else? Baseball glove. How old were you? You still got it? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, hear, I hear you. I just got me an Al Kaline glove the other day. Bought it somewhere. Okay. Detroit Tigers, right? Detroit Tigers. I think you take the back. Anyway, anybody else? You get a what? A cat? <laughs> <laughs> Creepy crawler cat maker? Yeah, I got you. I hear you, huh? Someone back there? A dollhouse? Train set, BB gun. BB gun, Red Rider, yeah. boom, yeah. Here we go, here we go. Anybody, did anybody get the Easy Bake Oven? Yeah. Okay, uh huh. My sister got the Easy Bake Oven, and we thought we were all set, but it didn't bake very good, you know. <laughs> like that one light bulb just didn't make it happen, you know, for us. And and I got a racetrack one year. You know, the HO racetrack, and anyway, it's, it's neat to think back on, on those things, and uh, one thing, uh, my mom used to make what was called these Mexican wedding cookies, and, and they were great. Well, she's been um, gone for a couple years now, and, and even prior to that, she didn't make them for a number of years, but I ran into a, a guy I grew up with, and his his wife's brother used to date my sister back in the day. Anyway, his wife got my mom's recipe years ago. This is like back in high school. And I ran into him. He says, yeah, she still makes those. I go, any chance, right? <laughs> any chance she could make some for me? He says, yeah. And they came through, brought him out here at the church, made all these Mexican, my mom's, I tell you what, I haven't had that taste in my mouth since the last one she made, and it about brought tears to my eyes. You know, th th so, so Christmas, it's all about, you know, traditions and tastes and lights and, and, and songs and, and, and people and gifts and, and all that, but, but we know that's not the main reason. We, know, we, we all know that, and so this morning, it's really, it's about I Emmanuel, and that is God with us. And so, just a few passages uh, here this morning... Here we go, here. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which, which translated, which means God is with us. God with us. I go, God gave us the present of his presence in Jesus. Some, some, some 700 years, 800 years earlier, Isaiah the prophet actually spoke of the same thing. And 
said, here we go, Behold, a virgin will be with child and bear a son, and she will call his name Emmanuel. So they've been waiting for hundreds of years for Emmanuel to show up, and finally, he's on the scene, he's, he's on the earth, and some people celebrate, and others get rather hateful. And don't you know, it's, it's always been that way with Jesus. Either, either you love him, or you hate him. Either, either you put him on the cross, or you stood at the foot of the cross and you wept as, as he was on the cross. Either you celebrated his death, or you grieved his death. And you know, it's not that different today. Uh, still, either, either are, you're for Christ and you live for him, or you don't. Either he's the most important being in your world, or everything else comes in and, and takes priority. And so nothing has really changed. Um, so he's, he's finally here. And just, a, just a couple things this morning. Yeah, just a couple things. Because then we've got kids out here, and, and maybe they're already getting antsy and they're pantsy, and they're ready to go already. And uh, So uh, here, Emmanuel, because... God desires to do your life with you, okay? Um, he does. He desires to do your life with you. I'll put it this way. He wants to be with you more than you want to be with him. He wants to spend more time with you than you ever wanted to spend with him. And that's, that's like crazy, really? Why? Why would he want to do that? It, it, it's not that he has to. It's not that God needs us for him to be complete or for him to be joyful, uh, for him to be happy, for him to be... God, God doesn't need us, but, but God wants to. He wants to spend time with you. Sometimes we do things we don't want to do. Some of you may be here this morning. You did not want to come, but someone said, come on, it's Christmas, go to church. Or they promised you something. Glad we got some ladies on the front row here. Isn't this great? We got the front row kind of filled up. So glad. Will you come back here next Sunday and sit? Probably not. I just they said they said don't embarrass me. Of course I have to. Right? I I I have to do that. But he wants to be with you. Now there are times we do things that we won't don't want to do. Oftentimes there are things we do we don't want to do. Go to school, go to work, go to the dentist, take out the trash. You know, no one, no one pay your taxes. No one go, oh, I can't wait. It, it's, it's not like that. Sometimes you're with people you would rather not be with, right? Sometimes over the holidays, you know, your family, you ain't seen them for years or all year, and finally they're here, and you're sitting there going, really? Uh, and you, you come up with excuses. You, you preset your phone to ring at a certain time, so you have an excuse or if you have a baby, you pinch the baby so it cries and say, we have to go home. I mean, that's, that's what some folks do because they just can't take it. So sometimes there's just things to do that we don't have to. Listen, God did not come to be with you because he doesn't want to. He, he wants to be with you. Can I put it this way? God enjoys you. And that might seem strange. Because some of, some of you don't enjoy yourself, and you're wondering, how can Almighty God, who knows everything about me, enjoy me when I don't enjoy me? How can the, a, a, a God send His Son uh, because He loves me when I have a hard time loving me? Now, doesn't God know what I've done? Doesn't know God what I'm doing? Doesn't know God what I'm thinking? Doesn't God know what I'm thinking? Doesn't God know? And He does, but even with that, He still wants. He desires to be with you. And that's, that's huge. Here, God wants to talk to you more than you want to talk to him. It's like God always has something he wants us to know or to reinforce. Uh, he, he doesn't always talk. And, and I've, I've never heard God audibly with my ears talk. Not that he couldn't, but I never have. Maybe you have. 
But God talks to us other ways. He talks to us through, through his creation. He talks to us through his word. He sometimes talks to us through other people. And sometimes he talks directly to our heart. So just, just take a second. And I'm, I'm going to suggest God has something he wants to tell you right here, right now. I believe he does. And so with the, with the ears of your heart, just ask him, just, just in, internally, God, what is it you want to tell me? Right now, what do you want to tell me? He told a lot of you something, didn't he? He wants you to know something right now. I don't exactly know what he told you, but I think to a lot of you, he said this. Don't you know how much I love you? Don't you know that? You know, there are some people, I, I hear them on the phone, and whenever they, they get ready to hang up, they say, uh, love you. And if they call five minutes later when they hang up, love you. I'm going, but you know why people say that a lot? It's because I think we need to hear it, because I think we doubt it a lot. There's a lot of people, they're just looking for one person who will love them for the rest of their life. Looking for one person that'll say some vows and make a promise, you know, for better, for worse, and all those things. For the, they're looking for one person. There are a lot of people still looking for one person. And, and if they can't find or if they've had disappointments, they may conclude that maybe I'm unlovable. Maybe uh, who I am, uh, I'm not able to be loved. And God would say this, that is just not true. He says, because I love you, I always have. And there's nothing you can do to cause me not to love you. And so Emmanuel, God with us, is because God desires to be with us. He wants to. Why? Because he has this incredible love for us that we don't really understand. Because we know, we, we've disappointed others, haven't we? And sometimes we've disappointed ourselves. And none of, none of us have, has this stellar past. No, no one does. We're call, all in, in some ways sort of in the same boat. And God here, this time of year, says, Emmanuel, God with us, because he wants to do life with you. Why? Because he has this incredible love for you. Never forget that. May the message of God's love never get old. Because it's easy to doubt. Because, um, you know what? Life and people are not always nice. Did you know that? Life and other people are not all, and that didn't take anybody by surprise. Some of you are thinking, are they ever nice? Yeah. But when life gets hard because people get mean or circumstances occur, it's easy to doubt sometimes that God loves us. So he reassures us by way of Emmanuel, God desires to do life with you because he loves you. Whenever you doubt his love, you think, Emmanuel, God's with me because he wants to be. He's not gritting his teeth. He's not saying, how much longer do we got to be? To... He's not like that. He's not ready for her to go home, him to go home. It's not like that. He wants to do life with you more than you want to do your life with him. That's Emmanuel. Secondly, Emmanuel, you are no longer alone. This is what I know about loneliness. When you are lonely, it causes you to do things often that you know you shouldn't do. Right? I know I shouldn't. And I know this isn't going to turn out good. But I'm 
lonely. Don't you know that loneliness is one of the most powerful things we can experience? And out of loneliness, often you end up doing things that you regret. You know going in, this ain't going to turn out well, but I don't want to be by myself. I can't take the pain. I can't take what other people think when they see me by myself. I think I told you, when I was down in Bible college in South Carolina, there were, and maybe men too, but there were women who would never go to the cafeteria if they didn't have someone to go with because they didn't want to eat by themselves. Now, men, I think, are somewhat different. As long as there's food, we don't care, right? We don't care. How many of you guys would go to Golden Corral all by yourself, right? Every single one of you would. Because the thing with guys, we are friends with food, right? It's, it's one of our greatest friends. It brings us some of the greatest comfort. We just don't care. We don't count calories. We don't do Weight Watchers. We kind of just don't care if we look like Santa. I mean, we will just eat and eat and eat. We don't care how many pounds we gain. We just don't care anymore. For the large part. If we have to die early, at least we died full. I mean, that, that's kind of the way we look at it. What other people think. When we're eating, we don't care what anybody thinks. But back then, it was like, boy, if I go by myself, and people I might think that maybe I'm not so good, or uh, I'm not so popular. And, oh, so Some of them literally would not go to eat. And I just found that to be bizarre. I don't know if it's still like that or not in universities or in schools or or that, but back then that, that, was, that was the case. Seemed like they still put on weight. Um, but anyway, you're, you're no longer alone, even, even if you feel lonely. Now, there's two types of lonely. One is I feel lonely in a crowd. Because there's, I don't know, there's a few people here this morning. Some of you feel lonely right now, but yet there's a lot of people around. Yeah, but they don't know me. They won't talk to me. But uh, e even if, when you have a, a Christmas dinner somewhere, there may be family and friends, but you may still feel lonely in a crowd. Or my, my... And the other type of lonely is when you're all by yourself and you feel lonely. So there's two different types. Just because you're with people doesn't mean you don't feel lonely. And God's saying, listen, you no longer have to feel lonely. Why? Because you're no longer alone. Sometimes God wants you by yourself, you want to know why? Because he wants you all to himself. That's why. When you have a law, all these other people, sometimes people can be distractions. And God is a, is a jealous God. He wants you something all for himself, you by yourself. So you're not distracted by other things, by noise. And so he often speaks loudest and clearest when it's just you and him. Learn to enjoy the presence of God, just you two. Yeah, yeah. Final, final thing here this morning, and that is, because of Emmanuel, you have nothing to fear. You understand? Because God is with you. One thing I know about life is that life wants to scare you. Right? Life wants to terrify you. Life, life wants you to bow down to its fear more than bow down to God. Life wants to control you where God doesn't. Life wants you to, be a sh to, to know of, of, of living in the what ifs. Well, what if and what if. Life doesn't want you to trust God. Life wants you to think that you are in control and you need to take control of all things. If, if you knew me a long time ago, and some of you do, you know that when I was growing up, I was really small for my age. Some of you remember that, don't you? Some of you remember that. Some of you remember that. Some of you remember that. In fact, um, some of you may know uh, this lady. Her name is Ann McFerrin. Uh, and she has her doc. She, she teaches at, at Huntington University. Well, I've known Ann all my life. My, my sister and, and Ann were were really good friends, and Anne's aunt lived right next door to us, her Aunt Mary. And so they would bring Anne over when she was just, just a tiny thing, and Anne, wherever Anne went, she liked to have her tricycle with her. So my mom remembers, oh, whenever Anne was growing up, 
Um, she's already riding her tricycle around. So we, got, I got, we have a, actually have a picture of me and Ann McFerrin and my sister, and Ann's on her tricycle. I'm maybe like three or four years old, and, and there we are. Well, a couple years ago, uh, we went down to this conference, in church conference in, in Huntington, and there standing out front is, is Ann McFerrin. I don't know her as doctor. To me, it's just, it's just Ann. And I go, Ann McFerrin, you know what she says to me? Little Ricky. <laughs> Little Ricky. I thought, wow, I mean, very few people still call me Little Ricky, uh, but, but, but she does. And, and since I was, I was little, but I was fast, so I could run away from stuff, but being little made me what? An easy target for people who wanted to prove how tough they were. I mean, when you're little, man, it's, it's easy to get picked on, and I, and I did. And so later in life, I finally started to grow, but guess what I did? I, I got into martial arts because no longer did I want to be scared from people and, and run away from people. No longer did I want to have a, a big friend next to me so I didn't have to be scared anymore. But you know what? It only goes so far because life still wants to scare me. I mean, you're, you're never as, as tough as you think you are, e- even if you can do a, a few things. Um, life always wants to scare you in other ways. There's still things like health, finances. Uh, money wants to talk to you and say, you know what? You don't have enough. Doesn't that anyone, does anyone want to tell you? It wants to tell you, you don't have enough. Did you know that? You don't have enough money. You don't have near enough. Well, you do today. But how about tomorrow? You know about tomorrow? And of course, we don't know about tomorrow. What could happen tomorrow? Or in 10 years? We don't know. Do you know how much it costs to get medical care? Do you know how much it costs to go into hospital? Do you know how much it costs to go into rehab? Do you know how much it costs to go into... Do you know how much... I go, no, but it's a lot. Talk to you. It's a lot. You don't have enough, you don't have enough, you don't have enough, you don't have enough, right? So it wants, to, it wants to basically control how you live out of fear of tomorrow. Guess what? People with a million, two million dollars, ask them if they got enough, what they're going to say? Uh-uh. Now, how many here have that? You know, and even if you did, you wouldn't raise your hand right now. <laughs> Very few. Even if you did. Back at the beginning of the 1900s, there was a guy named Nelson Rockefeller, like one of the richest guys in the United States. He had a boatload of money. And they asked Nelson, they go, hey, you know what? How much money is enough? You know what he said? Just a little more than what you have. It's never enough. We're, 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 not, looking, we're not really looking for the lottery, but we're looking just for a, a little more. I mean, it was great, you know, Randy give his staff the gift cards. And being the lead pastor, I think I should get maybe at least a little more than what the, what the others got. Yeah, and the necklace came in, you know, we're, we're glad for those things, you know. But we're just looking for, just, just, if we just had just, just, just a little, little more, then we wouldn't be quite so fearful for the future. Oh, Really? Talk to anyone. Ask them how much they made 10 years ago. Ask, talk to them how much they made 20 years ago. And they'll tell you this, this bottom number, really, how'd you get by? I don't know, we just did. But today, it's not, well, you know what, I'm okay now. It's still, I, I, I just had a little more. I just had, just had that raise if rent just went down. If utility bills weren't quite so high. So money wants to control you. It wants to have you be scared and to serve it. We can't afford that. We can't afford that. Oh, my goodness. You have nothing to fear. Really, you have nothing to be scared of. Now, you might say, well, what what if something happens? Listen, I'm going to tell you something. If you live long enough, I will guarantee you something will happen. Something will happen. Um, Trusting in God doesn't mean nothing will happen. It'll mean that even when it or if it happens... God will take care of it. That's what it means. Well, you know, I, I pray that for my wife and my 
kids that, you know, nothing happens to them. They don't get sick. They don't get an accident, you know, and all this. And I trust them, but it doesn't mean it won't happen. But even if it does, he's going to carry us through that. that. That's what that means. On account of Emmanuel, you don't have to be scared. Folks, you don't have to be scared anymore because God is with you. And he will take care of his people. Can you trust him with that? I call it the big ticket items. Can you trust him with your kids? Because if you can't trust him with your kids, you can't trust him. Can you trust him with your tomorrow? Even when you don't know what tomorrow holds. Because none of us do. Something could happen. Yes, it could. Will you still trust him? Not that it won't happen, but even if it does. He'll walk you through that. I told you, my mom died about two years ago. For the first year, I was a basket case. And I would ask people, how did you guys get through this? How did you get through this? Because lots of people have lost their parents, some of them a long time ago. They say, well, it's not that time cures all wounds, but it helps. And so it took about a year. And now it, it doesn't dominate my thoughts the way it used to. Still not a pleasant thought, of course, but it's not the same. And so God, God walks us through things. So trust him. Trust that he's with you and that he will never abandon you even if the worst thing happens in your life. Now, having said that, don't, don't test him. Don't go out and do something you know you shouldn't do and expect God to rescue you. He might, but don't expect him to. Don't go out and, and, and compromise on what you know is right on your integrity and expect him to come through. Don't put God to the test. The simple way I put it is this. You know the easiest way to stay out of a bar fight? Stay out of a bar, right? Right? I'll guarantee you, if you don't go to a bar, you can't get in a bar fight. And so live that way. Live that way. Well, the easiest me, way, way for me to stay where I want to be is to not to do and go to the places and be with certain people that I know it's going to take me down. Don't say, well, I'm just going to trust God to lift me up once you've made the decision to go and do a few things that you know are not right. We were made to be with God. We were. God walked with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. He led his people, Israel, through the wilderness and dwelt among them wherever they went. God came, he dwelt with them in the tabernacle, in the temple, and he dwells with us now. And that's what Christmas is about. Emmanuel, God with us now and forever. And be, be, because of Emmanuel, he is always, always with you because he loves you don't doubt that. Whenever you doubt your love, think, Emmanuel, God's with me because he wants to be with me. He wants to be with me. God loves me. Whenever you feel lonely, you say, you know what? I might feel lonely, but I'm not alone because, Emmanuel, God, God is with me. He's always with me. He will never leave me. He will never abandon me. He will never forsake me. I can always talk to him. He always walks beside me because of Emmanuel. And the third thing, whenever you get scared, and we do, man, we get scared. We get the doctor's report. You see what stocks have been doing lately? Some people are, oh no, oh no. Or maybe your relationship isn't what it ought to be. You don't know about tomorrow. You have nothing to fear. Trust him with your life and with your tomorrow. He's a big God, a big loving God, and he will see fit to take care of you no matter what. Merry Christmas. Pray with me. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for your goodness to us and yeah, the incredible love that we really can't comprehend. 
in one sense we believe it, but sometimes it's easy not to believe it at all. And we're not alone. We don't need to fear. Emmanuel. We pray it in Christ's name. Amen.